satisfied with this? No. <laughs> um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for coming tonight. Um, life is always busy, and getting out for a two-hour concert isn't the easiest thing. But we're so happy that you're here, so that we can share all the music that you heard this evening with you. Um, these students have worked so hard since back in August, and we are all just so lucky to have so many wonderful musicians and wonderful voices. And I feel honored to work with them every single day. So let's give them one more big round of applause. talk to you for a second about this next song, because you're going to hear some sounds from the stage that are a little bit unusual. Different noises like er and uh, and things like that that we don't typically sing on this stage. Okay, a little historical context. David's Lamentation is, as it says there, an American South shape note song. In the late 1700s, um, the state of music education in what was about to be the United States was rather dismal. And a number of composers and music teachers decided to take it upon themselves to travel down the east, all the way down into the south, and go to church congregations where they could find people who wanted to be able to sing in harmony, but were not able to because they hadn't been taught. And they brought with them the do-re-mi system, which we call solfege, to learn notes. Now, generally, we use letter names A, B, C, D, E, F, G in the musical alphabet, and depending on the key, we assign those various letters solfege syllables. So if the first note of our piece were right here, we might call that Do, the next note up would be Re, Mi. So typically we learn all of our music doing that. Um, now, the shape note thing comes into play because learning to read the letters is pretty challenging. And some of these teachers thought it would be easier to just, instead of having them have to think about the letters on the staff, the lines and spaces, if they just made each different note head a different shape to represent the solfege syllables. So that's sort of how this all originated. And typically, when these pieces of music are performed today, um, in, order, in order to try to make them sound historically authentic, since they were sort of southern pieces, we sing them with a little bit of a southern accent. Now, I say a little bit, I think we do a lot, and we're probably doing more than we need to, but it's fun. Um, and I think you'll find that with this sort of really bright sound, the chords really ring and sparkle in a way that they don't without that kind of a vocal production. So this is an unusual piece. I wanted you just to know we're doing this on purpose, um, and uh, we hope you really enjoy it. 